ông cứ cho ông chúng tôi chụp ra bậc ca bận to cái chấm ca này để thi sạm bậc ca nơi thằng này đi ông chụp ra nâng phơ sạm bậc ca sản phẩm cho khay cam nè chụp điện elizabeth baker bận chọc tạm cầm ruộng phèn cá cà bò thịt hết nơi cà cầm nọt sản phẩm cho khay cam rau cọt lúc này sai cầu vượt thi lang đi cam bây giờ thằng nạp vật tầm miền ở vật tầm miền phía kỳ nâng bậc cô đây ông chụp ra có hàng chưa nhà chùa rùm được không cái chấm bậc ca sạm bậc ca thay đi Sơm cột lục thiên, sâm đập sạm nà ca nơi thay ní, làm chi có sâm co khơi thà cột phía kia tiếng o nơi đường cái đây ní miên vọt miên, lợn lên tây lục vàng bơ mây tây bầm mộc non mộc bầm rồng đầm nang ở đầm ở đằng đập bạc bên ní à vọt miên nơi pei bạc ní, lục miên thuộc địa to khôn hai lục nằm miên vọt miên nơi pei rồi xiêu, lục xây nơi chìm nền Elizabeth Baker miên vọt miên đuổi hai được nông bản tục sạm nà ca ní, nơi thay ní đây mình miên sạm xây bầm rồng nổi tiếng, sơm mà cột lục thiên. bà học quân, hay một nông đào về thì cả chuẩn từ gồm về thì cả việc cái đấy tăng thu nhập đến đào chìm phù, vấn đề chìm niến, chìm sâu bọc cột, về thì cả chuẩn từ chìm gồm song phòng mặt là vén làm bài xua bị chết lừa từ đẹp chìm niến lừa bàn hà mùi chìm nuôn bẹp phòn đường ai cả xa, dùng chơi lừa chìm gồm song mặt là vén Merci, Monsieur le Président. En fait, je ne suis pas sûr que je vais apporter des éclaircissements. Je pense que je vais plutôt en demander à Madame Becker. Madame Becker, au cours de l'audience d'hier et d'avant-hier, euh, il a été fait état d'enregistrement euh, de, euh, des interviews que vous avez conduites avec euh, euh, Pol Pot, Yang Sari et Yang Tiri. Nous avons recherché dans le dossier et nous avons effectivement retrouvé trace d'enregistrement audio d'un certain nombre d'interviews. Et nous avons à la cote D28 R du dossier des interviews dont les titres sont Yang Sari Non Pen 1978 Yang Tirit Pol Pot Dinner et Pol Pot Interview Vous avez également été destinataire d'un courrier que les co-juges d'instruction vous avaient adressé au mois d'août 2009 concernant précisément ces euh, interviews. Et vous y aviez répondu, euh, le courrier des co-juges d'instruction et votre lettre en réponse figurent également au dossier au code D28.1 et D28.2. Dans votre réponse, vous donnez un certain nombre d'indications. Cependant, si cela est possible, je pense que on vous remettra au cours de la pause de ce matin ou de la pause déjeuner, euh, on permettra d'écouter en partie ces enregistrements audio afin que vous puissiez euh, nous dire si effectivement ça correspond bien à ceux que vous avez adressés euh, à la Chambre. Et euh, également, pour, euh, on vous posera ensuite peut-être quelques questions supplémentaires concernant les circonstances exactes, savoir les dates précises auxquelles euh, ces interviews ont eu lieu. Voilà, donc euh, pour l'instant, c'est juste une information. Donc, euh, soit ce matin, soit au moment de la pause déjeuner, vous aurez la possibilité d'écouter ces enregistrements euh, qui, euh, dans lesquels on, on, on entend effectivement la voix de Paul Pot, de Yang Sari ou de Yang Tiri. Donc, il peut être intéressant, tout à fait intéressant pour la Chambre. Voilà, et je précise que pour l'instant, il n'y a pas de transcription des interviews. Merci. 
ហើយពេលវេលាតំណងយប់ហាក់ផែលគ្នានឹងការដែលអ្នកបច្ចេកទេសខាង Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Good morning, Your Honours. Good morning, Council. Uh, Mr. President, before I continue my questioning uh, to the expert, um, my client has informed us that he has uh, two follow-up questions um, relating to answers provided by the expert yesterday. Uh, so, um, before I continue, I would like to ask your permission that uh, Nuji asks the questions that he has, the two questions that he has, uh, to the expert. Would that be possible? Uh, thank you, Mr. President. ຈົນຮ່ວມຈິດກໍລົບຕະລາການກໍລົບລູກປະທານລູກສໄຣ Ban Mao Chi Chi ទឹកទាំងអស់ប្រហែលបីលៀនតោនហើយដែលបានសម្រាប់ប្រជាជនកម្ពុជាស្រូវត្រង់ Nisky Thank you. The reason the United States government gave for um, the bomb bombing in general was supporting the Khmer Republic. Um, as you know, the, um, after the coup d'etat in 1970, the United States took over full support of the Khmer Republic's military um, campaigns and supporting their government. I'm going to, I believe, interpret your bombardment to mean aerial bombardment, and specifically when you talk about the days, I believe you're mostly talking about the, the very intense campaign in 1973, um, and that was um, the, uh, the result of the fear at that stage of one that the Khmer Republic would lose, and two, uh, the belief by then um, the, the administration of Richard Nixon that by bombing, the Khmer Rouge would come to the negotiation table. At that point, um, 
the Paris Accords had been signed with Vietnam, with the North Vietnamese, and Laos had also made an agreement, and the whole force of the American policy was to end the American involvement and make it so that U.S. troops can withdraw. So the belief, and I'm, I'm only telling you what the United States government believed and why they said they were doing this, was to entice the Khmer Rouge to the negotiation table. That failed. And the United States Congress, because they did not want any more reports of innocent Cambodian people being killed, the rice fields being bombed, the United States Congress passed a law to end the bombing. It was upheld by the Supreme Court. And on August 15, 1973, the bombing ended, and there was no more U.S. aerial bombing of Cambodia in the war. รัฐาภิบาลอเมริกาเตรียมตัวขอเตรียมเลยสาวกับเนตกรรมได้คลุ้นบานสาบรู้หมอกเลยประเทศจนกัมพูชีได้หรือเต๋อหรือก่ออ
end of course. Oh, yeah. Did, Did you, you in fact uh, say that to the world? Yeah, that's why I said that to the world. Yeah, that's why I said that to the world. Yeah, that's why I said that to the world. Yeah, that's why I said that to the world. Yeah, that's why I said that to the world. Yeah, that's why I said that to the world. Yeah, that's why I said that to the world. Yeah, that's why I said that to the world. Yeah, that's why I said that to the world. Yeah, that's why I said that to the world. Yeah, that's why I said that to the world. Yeah, that's why I said that to the world. Yeah, that's why I said that to the world. Yeah, that's why I said that to the world. Yeah, that's why I said that to the world. Yeah, that's why I said that to the world. Yeah, that's why I said that to the world. In fact, I was um, on Tet Sombat. Particularly, what was unusual was that he filmed former cadre demonstrating how they killed um, during the purges in um, Democratic Kampuchea. And I have never seen that before since. But then I'm still um, not sure if I understand why these two particular cadres that I, that I quoted, why their statements should be taken um, with some grain of salt. What, what is your reason to say that? I don't know. I'll repeat again. Um, all of us researchers have looked through the files. We have combed them. There's not been any other testimony like that except the officials who are rationalizing what they did with that kind of um, with that, that line. So two people out of all those years of researchers, it's the evidence is overwhelming the other way. Um, Mr. President, with, with your permission, I would like to uh, cite um, one or two paragraphs from a very recent filing um, that we uh, made, that we did. Um, it's not on the interface, but I will be slow in, in identifying it. It's uh, a filing of our team on uh, 26th of January 2015. It has um, uh, the E number E335-1. Uh, the particular English uh, quote, the ERN number is 01057505, and the Khmer version is uh, one, sorry, 01057510 and 511. Uh, what I'm intent, what I intend to put before you is um, excerpt from an interview that Tetsambat gave uh, in the week after the judgment uh, in August 2014. There was an interview he gave to uh, VOA, VOA Khmer. Uh, <laughs> um, the interview was um, on Cambodian radio on 13th and 14th of August, and he said, and I quote the following. Uh, those who initiated and caused starvation, arrest, and execution um, in the Mr. Nguyen Chia or Mr. Popo's regime are still living and are in the government. Lower-ranked leaders acted excessively, and most low-ranked people secretly betrayed and opposed Pol Pot and Nguyen Chia. And those who can testify about this, to whom Mr. Tessambat has spoken, and I quote again, really want to speak, but have security concerns and need security assurances if they are to testify. And then the third quote, uh, his second documentary film, uh, which he says, and I quote, illustrates a conflict called the secret civil war in the Khmer Rouge regime and what was behind those killings. So, um, uh, hopefully Mr. Ted Sambat will be testifying uh, before this court soon. He has uh, indicated his willingness. And what he seems to be suggesting, uh, based on his 10-year uh, research, is more or less what I put to you yesterday, that there was in fact um, a civil war almost immediately after uh, 75 between two opposing factions. Um, and I would like to have uh, your reaction to uh, these quotes. 
บอันนี้จะมีกมาตอนสลอยท้อมสมจริงสาปริญาณตระชีพการ what defense council has done is read very small portions of a large book by Ted Sambat and then given his view which is not supported in my opinion by the book about the crimes of democratic Kampuchea and who's responsible. Reading the book of Tet Sambat, what he makes it clear is that Nun Chia is responsible and has acknowledged responsibility for the purges and the killings in uh, of people in democratic Kampuchea. So putting a small portion of the book and not the entirety to the witness I think is, is unfair and not helpful to the truth-finding process. Mr. President, um, I'd be very happy to read complete interview. I'd be very happy to read other passages from the book, but I don't think in, relation, in, in respect of time that would be helpful. I think uh, Ted Sambat and also Rob Lampin, by the way, are very clear um, in their views based on their research that there was in fact a civil war between two possibly equally strong factions. And I think the expert uh, is perfectly capable of answering uh, or again reacting to that uh, proposition. I, I would kindly ask your honor to counsel to find one passage in the book where Tet Sambat says that during the DK regime there was a civil war ongoing. The book is as we all know, the book is based on the documentary Enemies of the People. We also know that Ted Sambat, together with Lemkin, was very busy with making a second documentary film. And the question, uh, the central question in that second, uh, that second film, which is still to be released, is exactly this uh, proposition. Um, so, uh, but I'm not quoting from the book, I'm quoting from uh, what he said very recently uh, in an interview to a VOA uh, commander. So I think I'm entitled to ask that question. เราอีกแบบก็เลยพิจารณาจุนเตอร์จะกรอมตัวดีเฟนต์ทำไมลอยมันเจ๊ะเลยปัญหาในกาสู้นังกาจุ่มตัวจงกรอยในสำนวนระบบมีตวีกาปิกรีลุงดุนชีแต่สมเจลุยจะกรอมตัวดีเฟนต์จะกรอมเฟนส์ the chamber shares the prosecution's concern about what appears to be a pattern of, let's say, selectively representing or misrepresenting documents and asking um, witnesses, experts, etc., to comment on it. For this reason, 
We allowed the question, which was, do you think there was a civil war pretty soon after 75 in the country, that you're not required to comment on other arguably selective excerpts put to you by counsel? Please answer the question. <laughs> My thing. Um, the answer is no. It's the same answer as yesterday. Um, very well. Um, I would like then um, to take you to another document um, which we discussed briefly yesterday, and that is um, uh, the report uh, made by uh, Geng Biao, Mr. President. Um, that is, as said yesterday, document E307-521. As a matter of fact, yesterday I saw that there is a full Khmer translation um, of this document. Um, that is for, this, for the benefit of the interpreters. Uh, there was some discussion yesterday about uh, the relevance of this report, and I, I think I'll, I'll um, briefly guide you through what, I, what we believe is highly uh, relevant, high relevance of this document. Um, it says, on, on the first page, that is no, ERN01001620 It's an editor's note. <laughs> on, on January 16, 1979, <laughs> Geng Biao, a member of the Chinese Communist Party, Politburo, and Secretary General of the CCP Military Commission, and currently elevated to the position of Vice Premier in the Ministry of delivered the report exclusively for internal use, analyzing the situation in, in the China after the fall of the Pol Pot regime. Geng uh, Biao himself, uh, when addressing his comrades, he is quoted as follows, that's the same, that's the same page, the first page. Uh, since the situation has changed very rapidly <laughs> to enable all leading cadres of various ministries and departments of the party central committee, the standing committee of the National People's Congress, the State Council and the party central committee's military commission to have a clear understanding of the situation. Chairman Hua, Feng, Hua has especially appointed me to make a simple report on the situation in the China to you on behalf of the party central committee and to give a preliminary explanation of the party central's committee uh, assessment of the situation as well as principles and policies to cope with as to avoid unconcerted action and possible difficulties in the future. So it's not, uh, not somebody's opinion, but it seems to be, uh, uh, there seems to be strong proof of uh, that this document is a reflection of actual, uh, the, Chinese, the actual Chinese perspective. Now, yesterday I gave you a quote already um, from this document. I would like to take you now to, uh, to a few more quotes from this document. Mr. President, that is um, English ERN 01001622. Khmer 01063796 and 79697. It's in the middle of the page. Um, page 381 it says on top. In 1973, in order to remind the Cambodian leaders to maintain constant vigilance, Chairman Mao also told Xi that Ho Chi Minh had talked with Chairman Mao about the establishment of an Indochina Federation. 
After 1974, Vietnamese troops coordinated with the revolutionary forces of Cambodia and various battles in Cambodia. Vietnam seized the opportunity to cultivate a group of Vietnam Cambodian The seed of disaster was thus sown. He then moves on to say, uh, and I quote again, on the other hand, there were too many factions among the Cambodian forces. Three main factions were formed at that time. The first faction, composed of Cambodian workers and peasants, and under the direct control of Pol Pot and Hugh Sampan, was the majority and the main force of the Liberation Army. The second faction consisted of the royal forces faithful to Sihanouk and old patriotic officers and men from Long Nol's troops who turned against Long Nol and joined the liberation war. Members of this faction, of this faction were not many, but all of them were well-trained allies of the Communist Party and sympathizers of the revolutionary cause. And then importantly, of course, and I quote again, the third faction was the well-equipped pro-Vietnam group consisting of quite a few members. And then he, uh, I move on to the next page, uh, Mr. President, 01001623 ERN, English, uh, Mr. President, 01063-0163, Mr. Excuse me. Can I please uh, uh, finish my question? I apologize to counsel if I interrupted his question. I was just going to request that he read the last sentence of 381 that goes over to 382 in order to put this into context. Mr. President, did I interrupt um, the prosecution when he was selectively quoting in to read in her, in, in her interview? No. So I can read the whole thing, but I have limited time and I would like to go directly to the point. We all can read, but... លោកកពេលលោកផ្ដល់ឯកសារមួយច្បាប់ជូនទៅអ្នកជំនាញដើម្បីគាត់ពិនិត្យមើលថាតើខ្លឹមសារដែលលោកអានលោកក៏ដក
Did you also read the next page where it says uh, 4,000? Yes. The report um, is d no doubt critical of the way certain things were handled in, in, in the UK, uh, but nevertheless, notwithstanding that criticism, um, the Chinese Uh, authorities, the Chinese Communist Party clearly distinguishes three factions. Um, and indicating that the Vietnamese backed faction consisted of 4,000 uh, communists. In the light of um, the civil war, uh, as, as, as cited by Tetson, but does that change your position or would you be able to react on this uh, document when it comes to uh, the distinguishing of those three factions within the Khmer I'm going to put aside Ted Sambat because I've already told you I admired his movie. The movie does in no way has this civil war. So, that's the, so I think I've answered that question. Now this document, that I, yes, I did read, but I should let you know that I can't bring my computer in and read it on the screen. So that's why I've asked you for the document. And thank you for giving it to me. I appreciate it. Um, this very much reflects, the China, this reflects what the DK has told China. There's no question about that. And I find I, what I, when reading it before and I read it now, um, the first time, if you remember correctly, the first time that um, DK did have a purge of Cambodians who were in Vietnam were the ones who came, who had settled in North Vietnam after the Paris Peace Accords of 1954-55. And so they, that was the first real purge. Now, here, the, the, this supposedly... There's n there was no actual physical evidence of, of um, Khmer Rouge DK troops with Lan Nga remnants forced in the West. In fact, the people who eventually fled DK and became the front for the Vietnamese invasion and occupation were the other side of the country in the East. So there's, there's a lot of internal contradictions in this. So does this accurately reflect what DK said to China and China's reactions to what DK DK had done, I think it does. It does accurately reflect, but that's one, that's, that's not, of course, what research says. Thank you for your answer. Um, what makes you say that this is, that the source of this information um, is only DK and not Uh, China's own intelligence. As you know, we discussed that briefly, China had many people uh, within DK and had a most likely very good intelligence position within, within DK. Why, why, what makes you say that it is only DK feeding the Chinese and not China, China having its own intelligence position and reaching that conclusion? Because, um, as I wrote in my book, the Chinese told me they were hamstrung. They did not have freedom of movement. That they, in fact, I quote the, one of the top Chinese diplomats as saying they were hamstrung. They did not have good intelligence. And as I, I pointed out, there's been a recently new book by Andrew Murtha going into at length the fact that the Chinese did not have the kinds of movement or intelligence they wanted. So that's why I said that. <laughs> There's no reason to go into discussion about that book. I, re I read that book, of course, as well, and he just spoke to some lower-ranking uh, Chinese cadres, so I'm not quite sure if I agree with that. However, um, setting aside the Geng Biao report, um, you, and I think especially Ben Keenan, is... Um, writing extensively about um, attempts um, to, uh, to bomb the country, Siem Reap, uh, sabotage attempts, uh, coup d'etats, uh, attempts to coup d'etats, uh, possibly poison attempts, attempts to poison Pol Pot and Nunchia. Um, would it not seem that in 
connection with that evidence, there per was indeed um, an opposing faction from the very beginning trying to sabotage um, the, the Pol Pot faction. Could you please read where I said that? No, I'm not saying that you said that, but I'm, I'm, I'm saying that you also, um, I mean, especially Ben Keenan, is writing about um, the, the, the bomb attack. 30 people got killed in Siem Reap in 1976. Uh, in confessions, there are um, uh, stories about um, attempts to poison Pol Pot and Nun Chia. There are all kinds of other sec secondary evidence indicating that there were plots to overthrow uh, the uh, Pol Pot and Nun Chia. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Comme je l'ai dit hier, pour que les partis puissent suivre, il faut que le Conseil nous permette de comprendre ce qui se passe. Il cite les travaux de Ben Kirnan sans nous orienter vers quels travaux en particulier. Il nous parle de confessions sans nous dire lesquelles. Donc, dans cette salle, sauf preuve du contraire, l'expert est Madame Becker et Monsieur Copé est avocat. Donc, nous aimerions que notre confrère arrête de témoigner et qui pose des questions qui permettent aux partis de suivre les débats. Je vous remercie. Mr. President, it would be really helpful if the civil party lawyer knows a little bit about this case. If she objected yesterday about um, um, uh, me quoting Poncho and, and Vickery, and now she's again um, contesting very basic information that, that, that everyone can read in Keenan, Header, anywhere. So it's, it's not that I'm asking something very peculiar. I'm asking something about what is widely described. Monsieur le Président, je, je demanderai simplement à notre confrère d'être courtois. C'est un principe qui euh, anormalement euh, court dans une salle d'audience. Il ne s'agit pas de lire et de faire notre travail de notre côté. Nous sommes dans une salle d'audience, il y a des règles de procédure. Notre confrère nous a habitués depuis le début à systématiquement mis représenter les preuves qu'il cite. Nous voulons simplement suivre les débats de manière loyale. Quand il cite Nan, je vous demande, Monsieur le Président, que vous lui demandiez de nous diriger vers les textes dont il parle, quand il parle de confession. Je vous demande, Monsieur le Président, d'orienter notre confrère pour que nous comprenions de quelles confessions il parle. C'est tout ce que je demande. For the record, Mr. President, I'm interviewing, I'm cross-examining an expert, and I, I can trust, hopefully, that she has a basic knowledge of events uh, between 75 and 79, but I move on. Um, Ms. Becker, I would actually like to take you to an interview that you took with Interit, uh, and an interview that was um, discussed in relation to questions by the prosecution, um, that is E3 slash 659, English ERN 0018222, and French 0074304748. It is page 25 of your, inter of, of your verbatim interview. Um, when the prosecution was reading this um, part of the interview to you, I think he was um, omitting an important piece of this interview, so I would like to revisit you this passage again. 
um, at one point you can read and that's on the top of the page answers your questions as follows yes I was traveling in order to see the conditions of the people and at the time when I came back in Phnom Penh I reported to our leaders that there was something queer in some provinces for example in Batambang I saw something very clear that they make people all people going to the rice fields very far from the village and they have no home and I saw they have no home and they are all ill I reported to my leaders that you interrupt her uh, and then you ask who were your leaders who did you report and then she answers to your question to the Prime Minister that's quite queer it's not normal there is something wrong in this in fact when they made inquiry they saw that So Pim was an agent of the Vietnamese because he was an ancient, ancient member of Indochina, Indochina Communist Party. You see, and at the time they joined in a new party. But when the Vietnamese, uh, Runim, Runim, Runim in Batambang, so Pim was in the east, he was in the northwest region. It's a little incoherent, but that's what she says. Uh, you go back to her and you ask her, so this is 1976, there was a purge in 1977. And then she answers, at the time I told my leader there is something wrong in that province, because I know the directors of the Prime Minister, not young, not old people, not pregnant women, uh, not women feeding babies, and not small children. But I saw everybody there in the rice fields, in open air, nothing, and with the sun, very hot sun. I saw many people ill of diarrhea and malaria, so I reported it to him. And then you ask, and what happened? And Inktarit answers, they made an inquiry, and in the end, in 1978, we, and you say, executed, question mark, and then she answers, and that is the quote, um, no, we arrest him. We know that Ru Nim was in big collusion with So Pim in order to carry out the orders of Yun in order to sabotage our policy and to massacre our people. So in this way they can make people rise against us because they don't know. People know only Pol Pot and they, know they don't know this. They don't know. They know that this is an order of Pol Pot. They don't know that Pol Pot don't order all of them to go to the rice fields. It's to cause dissatisfaction among people. And then you say, essentially you are saying that you were not in control. Now it would seem to me that, and correct me please, Ms. Becker, if I'm wrong, that uh, Inktarit is trying to say that she saw things in the Northwest uh, Zone which were not in accordance with party guidelines, that she saw all kinds of uh, things happening that shouldn't be happening, that it was reported and that it was apparently considered by Pol Pot and possibly others as uh, sabotaging the revolution and that they took the appropriate measures by finally arresting him and of course, as you know, uh, The question to you is, uh, what Inktarit says here is that in essence what um, Ted Sambat is saying as well that there was a civil war going on and that the other side was sabotaging uh, the, the, the policy of Pol Pot. Again, if you please, I don't know what uh, this Ted Sambat. Can we just forget this? Yes, forget Ted Sambat. Um, this is this is the rationalization, and I will step back a minute and explain how this looked. This is this is after they've been overthrown. This is later. She's talking to me. There, what, what hasn't come out, I think, in the questioning is the sheer incompetence of Democratic Kampuchea. You can have all kinds of directives, but you see in all kinds of reports, materials weren't sent, people didn't inter in, in understand directives, you have illiterate cadre who are supposed to read reports. It's, the incompetence cannot be stressed too much. So this is an example, I think, one of the incompetence, and two of, um, uh, with incompetence, the attempt to have a, when you have 
a country turned into an entire police state with open-air labor camps, you're going to have problems of control. And so I think this, this, this wasn't surprising to me. Um, you, you know, it, now in the 21st century, you immediately think of North Korea or something like that with similar kinds of attempts, and you have these huge problems. And I thought um, it was, it was um, something of her to admit to this. So one of the reasons I used the interview. Thank you for your answer, Ms. Becker. Um, I have some, uh, some, some smaller follow-up questions. Um, what can you tell us about a phenomenon in DK called uh, the Workers' Party? Can you be more specific, please? Does the name the etiquette Workers' Party uh, mean something to you in context of uh, decay? In, there are many different contexts. I, I, I'm, I'm still not sure. It could mean many things. It's like asking me about the, um, you know, Vietnam after 1975. Um, do you know if in Confessions and in uh, the Black Paper and in other DK documents um, the suggestion was put forward that uh, the other faction um, uh, in fact had um, its own party uh, called the Workers' Party? Yes, that's true. Is there anything else that you can t tell us about this? Um, it's the theme that you see, particularly after 1977 in particular, and um, uh, the rationale for um, large-scale purchases of cadre and their family. Is it, is it your opinion that there was no such thing as um, uh, the party next to the CPK called the Workers' Party? You mean a secret party operating uh, during DK? Um, no, I, I, I did not see proof of that, no. Um, another question, does the name Hei Sao mean something to you? Um, just like that, I can't think of no. Can you remind me? Um, yes, it seems he was a high-ranking um, uh, Vietnamese communist operating in DK, supposedly having contact on behalf of Vietnam with um, Sao Pim and uh, Does that ring a bell? No. Um, I'm looking at the clock. Um, my national colleague has uh, some more questions, um, so I would like to give the ຈາກກະໄດ້ຈິດຂອງຂົມກໍວິທະການຊ່ວຍກອດໃຫ້ສົມອົກຄຸນລູກປະທານອົກຄຸນລູກສໄຣບາອົກຄຸນສົມເ
east Kampong Cham Kampong Cham uh, Kampong Cham up to the border we went to the northwest Siem Reap and Bong uh, went through Kandal down to um, uh, Sienokville back and then of course many places in Phnom Penh I'm afraid my memory is not that good. It's all in my book, and I would have to, I don't, I, 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 um, I'm not going to bore you with reading it, but um, the major people I did include did you want me to read it to you? ហើយលោកអាចមើលឃើញគឺអ្នកឬក៏លោកចង់ខ្ញុំអានទាំងអស់ <coughs> Yes, that was one of the themes. Um, the, the condition of the um, of the uh, living conditions, uh, the military. The military situation um, uh, up north in the northwest, it was uh, uh, rice experimentations. Um, some of the fishing issues around the Great Lake, Tony Sap. Um, down south in um, in the port in Sienokville, it was exporting to Singapore and, and I believe Hong Kong some rice. Um, as I said, um, on the border with Commander Pin, the the, the possibility of Cambodia. Um, uh, holding back Vietnam on the border. So th th those were the major. And then in Phnom Penh, of course, with more policy. And again, um, the major interviews were with um, Foreign Minister Yang Suri and with Prime Minister Pol Pot. Um, I, three times I went on my own, three times, I believe, three or four times I went on my own in Phnom Penh um, when it was discovered that I was going on my own. Uh, the, the guest house was locked. Otherwise, and on one of those trips, uh, the two other, uh, Richard Dudman and Malcolm Caldwell, with me, were with me. But this was walking around Phnom Penh. Otherwise, and everything else, we were um, we were with generally two in process, um, several armed guards. Uh, it was very short because the um, uh, one of the guards would come and find me, so I never was able to go and come back. Um, and what was important was, um, in fact, that I didn't find many people. The, the city was very empty. Um, I, uh, the important information was what I saw. I saw, for instance, I walked past the central market. It was empty. The life that I knew there of people meeting there, having coffee, exchanging gossip, buying things, empty, nothing. Uh, the, the parks, there were no children playing, nothing. Schools were empty, no students. There was um, 
There is no life. And in some of the side streets, in fact, I saw buildings that were falling apart. Um, and used as warehouses. So it was a, there was behind the facade of the beautiful, you know, Manivong or Nordam. I saw a dukedness. Um, if you you wish you you want me to pick up from what I was saying the last two days, um, I gave a, my personal account. Um, it is I can't say that without a little bit of difficulty. So I would like you to tell me what details you would like. ខ្ញុំចង់ឲ្យអ្នកស្រីបញ្ជាក់អំពីព្រឹត្តិការណ៍ដែលនៅពេលថ្ងៃធ្វើធាតុកម្មតែយប់ដែលអ្នកស្រ
I hid in the bathtub on my stomach, which is what you learn as a war correspondent. It's the only natural fortress. I heard him run up the stairs because the bathtub was under the stairs. Then I heard many gunshots. And, um, after that, I did not see him until much later, hours later, when we were, um, and I've, I went through that before, and I didn't see him again until um, we were taken up to Malcolm's bedroom, and Malcolm's body was there, and his body was there as well. He was dead. នៅក្រោយព្រឹត្តិការណ៍នោះតើអ្នកស្រីមានបានអ្នកស្រីបានបញ្ជាក់ពីថ្ងៃមុនថានៅពេលក្រោយនេះគឺថាគេអៀងស
ta lục trong ấy cái nhôm bị chẹt chấm nói thân nặng đông non mà nè nó chẹt lẹ đại thực tế khi chấm trong ơi nè sau này bị chẹt nư nẹ này cái nằm này nhiều tiền họ tên nư cái nặng đoàn mình thấy một tiền đoàn đội lục post còn thừa ấy lục yên sĩ còn thừa ấy lục nuôn chia còn thừa ấy lục pe nè sau này một đó lăng tá nẹ đang ó nút căn nằm này như thế này là chỉ ba chỉ ba lo tay một đòn rồi như xưa luôn trong cả dương về tầm lại từ lừa quay đây nè sau này mà nãy hàng ឪពោតវាសូជនរលសេក្រតារីគឺជាគេវាសូជនរលសេក្រតារីគឺរដ្ឋមន្ត្រីការបរទេសអឺអឺអឺអឺអឺអឺអឺអឺអឺអឺអ